Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that are smaller than five millimeters in size. How do they get into the environment? What are their effects on us humans and ecosystems, including our oceans and seas? Once in the environment, microplastics are bound to stay there and they can enter and travel further up the food chain. This can have negative impacts on organisms, either directly or because microplastics are a vector for other hazardous substances and pathogens that cling to them. Large amounts of microplastics that originate from domestic use, for instance when washing clothes made of synthetic fibres or when using certain cosmetic products, end up in wastewater treatment plants where they are mostly removed. However, treatment processes could still be optimised to retain even more particles. Stormwater, originating from rain and snow, also absorbs significant amounts of microplastics that mainly stem from the abrasion of vehicle tyres, brake dust and road wear. If this stormwater is left untreated, it can be loaded with microplastics when it flows back to the aquatic environment. The EU-funded Fanplastic Sea Project has looked into the issue of microplastics in the Baltic Sea region, providing insights into the various sources of microplastics and their pathways to the sea. It has also helped to identify cost-effective solutions for reducing the inputs of microplastics. The Fanplastic Sea Project has shown that microplastics can be found anywhere in the Baltic Sea region, even in Arctic, pristine lakes. According to the findings, stormwater and raw wastewater have the highest microplastic concentrations. Polyester and polypropylene are the most commonly found types, mainly from laundry and bigger plastic items breaking down into smaller pieces. Tire wear and cigarette butts are some of the sources of the other types of microparticles that were also found. Modern wastewater treatment plants can remove between 93 and 99% of microplastics. But as the initial concentration is often very high, many particles still make it through. Further treatment is therefore needed, as is reducing the amount of microplastics entering the waste stream. For stormwater and melted snow, sedimentation in stormwater ponds and filtration technologies greatly reduces the concentration of microplastics. What should we do next? Better and harmonised sampling and monitoring across the entire region will help us to gain an even more accurate picture of the microplastic issue, particularly for tyre and road wear particles. We also need more innovations in removal technologies, especially those dealing with stormwater and urban snow meltwater. Pilot studies could help demonstrate how efficient these new technologies are in removing microplastics. At the individual level, we can also play our part. We should, for instance, favour fabrics that emit as little microplastics as possible and avoid using products that contain microplastics, such as certain cosmetics. In general, the less plastic we use, the better. And if we do, we should use plastics in a responsible manner. We should also drive more carefully and avoid heavy braking or quick accelerations, as car tyre particles are another important source of microplastics. We need to remember that it is much easier and more efficient to prevent microplastics from entering the Baltic Sea than to remove them from there.